What's up guys? Tonight's video is about being direct. I've helped coach several people in improving their ability to be direct. It's something that I tend to be very good at, but I've also practiced it a lot because in being direct, you can sometimes be abrasive. So these are going to be my best tips in order to be direct while still having some finesse and being well received. First thing I'd like to discuss is how you approach your the discussion you need to have. A lot of times what you want to do if you're not used to being direct is send an email or send a message, a Teams message or a text message, these different ways. Don't do this. If you can, you want to have the discussion preferably in person and then over the phone. And lastly, you would want to go with a written message. So do what's available to you, but make sure that you strive to have the most personal connection that you can with your communication. That's the first part. The second part is a couple phrases and a couple ideas relative to what's important for being direct. I think most of the times when I've coached individuals on this, they struggle to understand, and this is something I struggle with myself, is that your needs matter. And often when you have a request and you want to be direct, that's important to know because oftentimes we won't be direct and we won't be as clear as we need to be because it makes us feel uncomfortable. We don't value our needs as much as other people's. And this can be a natural tendency if you're a people pleaser, but this can be addressed. Like we could change this behavior. Part of that understanding that needs to come is the fact that our needs matter and that they are important. Another thing about our needs is that people can't give you what you need if they don't know what you need. So you need to communicate your needs. Um, and ultimately what we do, one simple switch that I notice a lot is people that fail to be direct, they often say we need, uh, we need this, or we need to do that, or we need whatever it might be right? We need fill in the blank. You need to change that. If you're asking somebody to do something or you're asking somebody to fulfill what you need, then you need to say, I need you or I need this from you. It is a, might seem like a very subtle switch, but it is a big change. And it's something you need to get very comfortable in doing. But ultimately, when we say we need, you're relying on the other person to agree with you. And if they don't, and if they don't really care, then they're going to assume that we now means you. It doesn't mean that. So we need to eliminate that and increase our clarity. We need to be very specific in what our request is. And it's, I need something from you, or I need you to do this, or I need your help, right? So this is a big switch. Um, another one is oftentimes when we have, when we ask, when you're asking somebody to do something or you need somebody's help with something or you uh, are asking for somebody to get something done for you, we often ask them to do it and then we just get an affirm, like we just get a yes, right? But in your mind, you know your timeline on when you expect to get it done, when you want it to be done. And so, a follow-up question that you often need to ask is when. You need to understand the timeline that they're thinking versus the timeline that you're thinking because that's another one of your needs, right? And your needs uncommunicated will often be unfulfilled. They'll just, they won't be met. So we need to say when, and so that way we get an understanding of when they're anticipating of fulfilling the request. If you're not specific, and if you do not clarify your needs and your expectations, they won't be met. So this is gonna be, then lastly, this is a little bit of a different hierarchy because fortunately I work in a position of authority and really I'm not sure if I would recommend the first phrase in every instance, but I often set expectations by just using that phrase, I expect, and then I list the expectation, right? But I think in a little bit more in probably other settings with less authority and less formality probably, I would say that you have two alternatives to that. You'd say, do you agree 
with this, like blank, uh, fill in the blank, or can you commit to fill in the blank? And what we're doing there is we're ultimately arming ourselves for a future talk if your expectations aren't met, right? Or if they fail to meet the agreement or they fail to live up to the commitment. And so this is helpful in both regards, right? We're gaining a, a commitment or we're gaining an agreement. And so you'd say, what do you agree to? Or what, do you, what, what is your commitment? And the real issue that we're trying to address when it comes down to this is trust, right? If we're working together or we rely on each other for a relationship, we need to understand that we can trust one another. And so that's really the stakes of the conversation. And if the agreements or the expectations or the commitments are failed, that's really the discussion and what it needs to revolve around. And it's the first example in saying, my goal is to trust you, but based upon this failure in, of your commitment or your failure with your agreement or this failed expectation, I'm struggling to trust you. I want to trust you. I still want to trust you but I need to see something different moving forward. And that's exactly how the conversation goes. And this works or uses in all sorts of scenarios, um, but it's, it's gotta be very clear, as clear as you can make it. And when asking for agreement or commitment, it's important for them to say it, so that way you know that they're on the same page. Uh, this includes the when, Right, that's setting the same understanding of timeline for something to be completed. And each of these switches can be very subtle. It doesn't have to be in abrasive, like I've been in the past. And they'll just help you to be more direct and start to get more of what you want and have your expectations met more regularly. So give this a shot. I hope it helps. It's helped several other people. You can't lose if you don't quit.